Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Kit guitars are a fun and inexpensive way of putting together a custom instrument. Whether you want a fully functional guitar or just an interesting art project will take different amounts of work and you will have to bring some of your own tools, skills and materials to the table, but assembling your own guitar and getting to choose how it's going to look can be a very rewarding activity. My friends over at Toman have sent me one of their Harley Benton guitar kits in promotion of the DIY kit challenge. These kits are silly cheap. You can get a ukulele kit for under 20 quid and the guitars start from as little as 58 pounds. The one I'm working with, the Jazzmaster style kit, is 75 great British pounds and it's incredible value for what we're getting here. We've got a bound neck with block inlays, the body with all the cavities routed for our convenience and all the hardware, electronics and pickups we need to complete the project. Of course, there's still a bit of work to do on my end. I'll need to cut this headstock into a more appealing shape. The frets certainly could use a little bit of smoothing out. And the body, although sealed, probably does need to be sanded back in preparation for stain or whatever other weird and wonderful paint job I'm going to put on here. Kit guitars are also an excellent platform to stray off the path and do your own thing, so there's no requirement to use all of the parts supplied in the kit. I've got a bunch of other parts that I've brought in here, many of them from allegory.co.uk who do very high quality electronics and pickups for guitars, as well as some hardware parts like bridges and pit guards. All of these parts will allow me some options to try fun things and hopefully come out of the end of this with a very interesting guitar. Now I'm coming into this project a little bit head empty, I've got no real idea of exactly what parts I want to use or how it's going to look when it's finished, so hopefully going through the process will get me closer to understanding what I want. You can see that I've got all the parts sort of laid out here in front of me in the arrangement that they would be on the guitar. I'll give you some idea what this will look like when complete. Now I'm saying this is a Jazzmaster style kit, it could be be based off the Jaguar instead, but I think the biggest indication that this is Jazzmaster is that this is a 25 and a half inch scale length, and that was the scale length of the Jazzmaster, while the Jaguar was a shorter scale length. Although this doesn't really fit the bill of a Jazzmaster. Jazzmaster didn't traditionally have the stop tail bridge like this. It would have had a vibrato system that would sit here, and this bridge is obviously different as well. That's more of a Jazzmaster bridge, and I think that look is a little bit better and want to push into that. Of course, that does mean I'm going to have to route a cavity under here um, to fit the mechanism for the vibrato and I'll have to plug up all the old holes, the existing holes for the bridge and the stop tailpiece. Traditionally, Jazzmasters wouldn't have had P90 pickups either. They'd have their own type of pickup, a Jazzmaster pickup, which is distinctly different and the Jazzmaster purists get very defensive about making sure people know the difference. So I'm thinking I might take out these P90 pickups, although they do look quite nice. I think these will be quite good P90s. But instead, I've picked up a couple of Jazzmaster pickup kits, which I will wind uh, to Jazzmaster specifications, and we can sort of modify that pick guard to fit those larger pickups and the cavities in the body underneath the pit guard will be there to accept those. One thing I suspected about this guitar kit, which I was proven right on, was that the body dimensions of this are slightly smaller, slightly reduced to what we'd expect from the original Fender design. As can be evidenced if we swap out this original pit guard here and put in one of the official Fender sized ones, and we'll see that it's much larger, especially in this dimension, this pit guard is now overhanging the body. So if I want to use a more traditional pit guard like this, I'll have to do some modification to the pit guard to get it sized, and that might be complicated. So it may be a more sensible option to use the original pit guard and change how it looks a little bit, because this is supposed to be tortoiseshell, but it's not real tortoiseshell, it's just an image of tortoiseshell printed on a pit guard, and I think we can do better. I certainly do like the flat black look of this uh, Fender pit guard, so um, we might find a way to change how that pit guard looks, as well as adapt it for the larger style pickups. And once all of those considerations have been taken care of, I'll need to turn my attention to the body itself and consider what kind of finish I want to put on here. Looking at the wood itself, we can see that it's actually not a bad three-piece body. The wood is light in colour, which would make it an ideal candidate for staining, if you want to do staining, or do something even more extravagant. I could do papier-mâché, I could put fake fur on here, I could do a whole 
host of things. And at the moment, I don't quite have that in my head and we've got a lot of work to do before we get to that point. So why don't you leave me a comment down below what I should be doing with this body? Because I don't think I'm going to get around to it in this video, perhaps in the next video, and you could be instrumental in making that decision for me. But right now, let's get this onto the workbench and make the modifications we need to to fit our new hardware. The guitar is now together, but by no means complete. And due to video publication deadlines, this is about as far as we can possibly go at this moment in time. I'm really enjoying that Jazzmaster bridge and vibrato system. That turned out great. And despite what many people have told me, the tuning stability is rock solid. One interesting thing about Jazzmaster bridges is that they pivot along with the vibrato system. The bridge is set on a couple of little stakes, little spikes, and the whole system rocks back and forth as the strings push over it. So the strings aren't really sliding through the saddles. The strings aren't moving in relation to the bridge. The whole bridge is moving with the strings and it always seems to return back to pitch. I've been using that quite extensively and no tuning issues whatsoever. Really love the sound coming from these pickups. They've got that single coil character, sort of like a Strat coil, but with a beefier, thicker sort of sound. Not quite in your P90 territory, which we didn't want anyway. We want these to have their own distinct sound and character. Coupled with the volume and tone controls, we can get a host of sounds 
out of these, backing down the gain, backing down the amount of treble in there, really darkening up the sound. We've got a large capacitor on that tone pot so we can get a lot of range on the tone control and that means we don't have to worry about missing out the uh, the weird control system that the jazz masters usually have that darkens the sound for rhythm playing. We can do all that from the standard tone control and get a suite of sounds and you'll hear that in a few quick sound examples. There's a lot of range here for going from dirty to cleaning it up by backing down the volume control, removing some treble and really smoothing things out and getting those jazzier sort of sounds. The neck is super comfortable to play. I did have to do a little bit of fret work to this to tidy up the fret ends. Just leveler file, little fret end dressing file, and then going through it with the micro mesh pads to polish them all out. Wasn't a big job, just very quick. Once over, and now everything's smooth and plays like a much more expensive, more high quality instrument. So yeah, these can be made to play really, really good with the tiniest amount of work. I did totally forget to re-establish the ground connection for the bridge, and that's why you'll see this guitar string going between the tone control and the bridge. That's just grounding the strings for the moment. That will be addressed properly when I open this all back up in preparation for finishing the body. And that's where I'd like you to leave a comment. Let me know what I should be doing to finish the body. Perhaps you've got a colour scheme you like. Should I be staining this, painting this, or covering it in some other weird and wonderful material? Please do leave a comment. My head's churning with ideas, but maybe you can help me narrow it down. If you've been watching through this and thinking, hey, that looks like fun, I'd like to grab one of these kits and try something like this for myself, then links to all those kits will be in the description of this video. And if you want to check out more about the Toman DIY kit challenge, then you can do so there as well. Grab a kit, they're very, very cheap, and have fun uh, assembling your own guitar and doing whatever modifications you would like. I'm going to be back with this in a few weeks' time. When it's completely finished, we'll be doing some stuff, we'll do a proper playthrough of it, so keep subscribed for that, and don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud, and stay safe. They say jazz is more about the notes you don't play.